Well, hello there, great person. Good to see you back. So today we're doing something different, a bit different, because currently there's no new Dune content. And yeah, I'm gonna do a yeah an episode of Marty Scared after this one. But yeah, this is something that a colleague of mine or a friend of mine sent me. He wanted me to react to it, so I'm just gonna do it. Um, it's a video about the largest black hole in the universe, size comparison. And I thought it would be just a bit funny too. Yeah, watch it, comment it uh, on it. Let's see how this is. And uh, yeah, I will tell you some background stuff perhaps if I know more. As you know, I am doing a bit basic research on black holes and especially how you learn about them. So if this is a video where you can learn from, this might be fun as well. So let's just get into it. Let's watch the video. It's from Kurz gesagt in a nutshell, which seems to be German. So if you're Germans and you ever see this, thank you for doing these videos seems to be quite high quality from the first picture I'm seeing here so good for you very good I really like that I really appreciate all the time you put into this so yeah let's just uh, not waste any time get into this video let's see what they do with black holes and um, I'm not starting it right now because yeah let's discuss this picture first because this is actually quite a good picture of a black hole see um, Many people have some misconceptions about this. So this is exactly right, as far as we know, uh, quite a new quite a new depiction of a black hole. We don't know about this one. Yeah, we haven't known about this for a long time. I mean, it's mainly you might have known that um, from Interstellar, they got the these calculations where they uh, took the Einsteinian field equations and they... Uh, put them in the supercomputer, so to speak, and it calculated what a black hole would look like with the light. And uh, what you see here is the accretion disk. This is the disk that is composed of material that is spinning around the black hole before yeah, falling into it. And by falling, it's going to go this way. It's not going to drop into something here. It's not going to drop into something this way, you know. It's just straight going to this, this center. And it's actually quite interesting. Black holes, they do two things. They have two singularities. One is not really real. One is real. And uh, yeah, one, one just appears to be one. So the, the sphere you see here is the Schwarzschild, radio, uh, Schwarzschild radius area, so to speak. And uh, inside this light can't go out. So photons can't escape, which may, uh, means you can't see inside. So it's a sphere, so to speak. And you can see the back of the sphere here. So this disk bends uh, here because uh, the length towards that is shorter and you can see around it. So if uh, the light comes here, goes around and goes uh, from both sides, uh, sides, you see the accretion disk. You see the bottom of the accretion disk on the other side and the top. So yeah, that's, that's everything. Oh yeah, and the singularity in the middle, that's the real one. And that's something we don't really know about. There are theories um, where we attempt to combine quantum physics with uh, general relativity. And that gives possible solutions to what exactly the singularity is. Because for the people interested in this, quantum physics is about uh, the smallest things. You might know that. And there are some areas where you can't really say... Uh, yeah, this point is different from this point. So there's there are areas where you can't distinguish anymore. And in mathematics, the black hole has in the middle one point. But in quantum physics, there is no point. There is just an area that, you know, the smallest area, so to speak. And that's, that's not uh, compatible yet. And there are theories, approaches, string theory, quantum loop gravity, whatever. Let's not talk about that. But basically, that's all I have to say to this picture. Hope I didn't bore you. So let's see what they have here. It's quite lovely. I really like that they did it this way because I've seen terrible depictions of black holes where it's a, a disk and then there's a real hole. There's no real hole. It's just, it's spherical, you know? So the let's see. The largest things in the universe are black holes. In contrast yeah. to things like planets or stars, they have no physical size limit and can literally grow endlessly. Yeah, if you, if you take galaxies or clusters out of the equation, so single bodies, the largest single body we know of, Always have to say that in science, we don't know everything, we will never know everything. 
So, yeah. Although in reality, specific things need to happen to create different kinds of black holes, from really tiny ones to yeah. the largest single things in the universe. So, how do black holes grow? And how large is the largest of them all? Good questions, right? What's going on? Oh, yeah. I will link those that channel. This video will not discuss how black holes work or how they form, since we've looked at that in detail in our black hole and neutron star series. You can check them out afterwards. For now, we're interested in finding Interesting. The I haven't seen those. in the universe. Let's start really, really small. Okay. Or your black holes. The smallest kind of black holes may or may not exist. If they do, they're probably the oldest objects in the universe, older even than I'm not sure if I'm not sure if primordial black holes would be the smallest ones. It's probably correct. He's probably he, they are probably correct here, but I'm I'm not 100% sure because primordial black holes are about a meter in diameter. So yeah. Let's see what I'm sorry. I, I just uh, I wanted to say that I I'm not that sure if they're the smallest ones because as you may know, there were these when the CERN um, powered up the Large Hadron Collider for the first time. So their particular accelerator, the big one in um, Switzerland, there were, were these documentaries and fear mongering that there would be a black hole created from particle collisions. And that might theoretically happen in the universe as well. So there might be smaller ones than this one. But yeah. Yeah. Than atoms. They would have formed just after the Big Bang, when the universe was so dense with violent energy that any tiny pocket that was just slightly more dense than its neighbors could produce a black hole. The smallest primordial black hole. Okay, I did not get that one. What does he mean by that? I mean, yeah, that's that. It's true, but I think he phrased it a bit strangely. You know, there, there in the earliest universes, everything was hot and dense. There were no real particles yet. There were just proto things flying around. And uh, the earliest, earliest precursors of everything were floating around. And it was basically in parts just energy that was very dense. And of course, he's right. If there were energy areas that were really, really dense, a black hole could have formed theoretically by energy compressing. You know, that's that's true. But um, the way he said it was a bit weird. I don't know hole that could still be around would be a trillion kilograms or so the mass of a big mountain and yet they would be no bigger than a proton a primordial black hole with the mass of earth would barely be larger than a coin this makes them very hard to find so we haven't actually observed any yet if they exist they may even be the mysterious dark matter that holds galaxies together let's move on to the yeah i have heard about that I have heard about that. I'm not sure if that's a good explanation. Um, because they would have to be evenly distributed, I think. And they so so um, their their number and their mass uh, should be evenly distributed because the curves we observe are, I think curves that evenly distributed dark matter would give. I've heard this, but I think there would have to be a lot of primordial black holes and not seeing one then is a bit strange. But then again, they are quite small. He said it, they could be as uh, big as the Earth. Um, if, uh, if you uh, consider Mars, or oh, let me fix it. So you wouldn't have to, yeah. yeah so the, the primordial black, as I said, a meter or as you said, a mountain could be like a, a, a very small one that you couldn't even see. And um, the earth would be like a, um, a little coin or something. Yeah, that's, that's black holes for you. They are very, very small compared to their mass. And uh, yeah, we, it, it's probably hard to detect. So I don't know. I've heard that there are other theories about dark matter though. So. Yeah, it could be, could could perhaps be, yeah. But then again, if they were created by quantum fluctuations, there are 
Yeah, whatever. They, I think, uh, no, I think they can't be. I've calculated that once. You, I think you can't. But if there's an absolute expert in the comment one day, um, I think they can't be created because they would evaporate. They can't evaporate quickly enough and you would measure them, but you can't because it's quantum. Yeah, whatever. I'm not going to talk about quantum theory here. But yeah, that's, that's highly likely. Um, that there uh, is... No, no, it's not. It's not highly likely, I think, I think personally, but this is really an opinion. Um, I would have to ask a, a colleague, but um, I don't think so. I've heard that brought up, but I'm not that sure if that's feasible. Kinds of black holes that we know for sure are out there. Stellar black holes. Yeah. See, we aren't, as you said, we aren't that sure if they even exist. Enough matter so that it collapses into itself. Yep. After that, the more mass we throw at it, the larger it becomes. In today's universe, only the most violent cosmic events can create the necessary conditions, such as the merger of neutron stars, or when the core of a very massive star collapses in a supernova. Kilo Nova, I've never heard that. I've never heard it. But then again, I'm a, my, my, my main area of expertise in real... Real um, hard sciences, um, quantum physics, so yeah. Those are probably things some people say. Kilo Nova. Mm. Supernova is the one you are probably know. You probably know if you... Um, if you... Um, read, read about this in, you know, in books or so. It's mostly a supernova. But of course, uh, two stars, if they collide, they have to be dense enough um, and heavy enough and big enough. So they have to, um, it, it's, I think it's the same, it's about the same size probably as w with one star in the supernova. It has to have a certain size to get uh, dense enough by gravity to compress into a black hole. So they two would be together if you distract the kinetic energy because they move, you know, they, they stop moving and the energy becomes potential energy. But yeah, so I don't, I don't think that happens that often at Kilonova. I could be wrong, wrong though. So yeah, the, the supernova one, that's the one you might know. So just going to recap that um, if a star that is about twice as big as the sun collapses, um, um, it becomes a black hole. Uh, that's because, you know, if uh, the, the sun is uh, doing uh, nuclear fusion, so it fuses elements into heavier ones, into heavier ones in the core. And of course, somewhere down the line, the elements get so heavy that they get quite dense in the core because gravity obviously pulls them together. And uh, as they get heavier, the elements get heavier. Gravity pulls them towards, and then there are one or two atoms somewhere in the star that are so close together that they collapse into a black hole it's like a seed and then it goes on like a chain reaction and then everything else goes in yeah so let's see what he's got for us about the supernova ones probably he's probably gonna tell us about the supernova ones now to have a unit to work with here we'll use the mass of our sun about yep. two million trillion trillion kilograms. Trillion trillion. The smallest known black hole has 2.7 times the mass of the sun, which works out as a sphere around 16 kilometers in diameter, large enough to cover Paris. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's not two, two times the mass of the sun, um, but 2.5. So you can calculate that, but I only know the rough formula. You know, if you have a formula in science, you can make corrections, you know, like let's take um, um, something falling down you can say yeah it's just moving through vacuum and then you can say no 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 let's let's uh, consider um, its shape you know and then you add some 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 expression mathematically for the shape and then it gets more complicated and then you get closer and closer to reality and concerning black holes i only know the roughest equation so to speak where no corrections are made and uh, that one yeah i think it's 2.5 but I might be mistaken. Don't don't quote me on that number. But yeah, it's it's two point seven is is definitely a size where it will be a black hole. So yeah, and it's only the size of Paris. I mean, imagine imagine that it's, it's so so small. You know, it's it's like um, yeah. I mean, if you have a good day, you could just walk across 
black hole that wouldn't crush you and kill you. But yeah, other than that, it's so small and it's still a star. You know, that's the that's the cool, cool, cool thing. If you take a star and it becomes a black hole, you know, if you're far enough away, like a normal planet orbiting it, it would obviously just be destroyed by the supernova or in the case of a black hole, which was also, I think, a mistake they made. It's called hypernova if it's uh, a star collapsing into a black hole. But anyway, so it obviously explodes and vaporizes everything. This whole solar system that was there possibly is just destroyed. So, you, yeah, but let's say a planet would survive that. Of course, they can't. It's impossible. But if, if there was a planet, if you put a planet there where the planets were, they would just behave as they did. Nothing cha would change. It would be the same because the math, ma math, mass doesn't change. So, yeah, it's, it's just... Uh, it's like you could orbit around that. And I mean, perhaps you've seen Interstellar. I've already talked about it. There is a planet orbiting it. Black hole. You know, if you are far enough away from it, it's um, it's just like a normal star. You know, it's it's only if you get relative, rel relatively close to it that these effects that everyone talks about are very strong and do funny stuff. But yeah, so yeah, this is interesting. So there's this black sphere so to speak, that we've seen before as well. And it's just there where the star was. And it's like the star's still there. It's so cool. I love that. So cool. Another lightweight black hole is the companion to the V723 Mon red giant star. That's big. This star is 24 times larger than our sun, 30 million kilometers in diameter. And yet it's thrown around by a tiny black hole yeah. just 17.2 kilometers wide. Yeah, because it's still a star. You know, it's like a binary system still. It's so fun. I love that. So this great. This tiny thing bullying the star is so much smaller that we can barely even show them in comparison. And you can't. Obviously, you can't. I mean, the one is 30 million kilometers. This one is 70 kilometers. This graphic obviously don't, doesn't show it. But he's, I mean, he says it, obviously. And so you, it, it's like uh, the, the surface of the sun would just be a line. Just a line and the black hole be here because you can't even see the curvature because it's, yeah, it's so immense, the size difference. So cool. So cool. One of the largest known stellar black holes is M33X7. It currently spends its time eating a 70 solar mass blue giant bit by bit. Yep. As all that stolen matter circles towards the black hole, like water going down a drain, uh, okay, he said something there I want to comment as well, but yeah, that's also cool. So if the star gets sucked in, obviously the black hole grows and grows, so the star gets pulled in more and more. So, you know, it's it's like a process. Like down a drain, you have to be careful there. It's just the um, the whirlpool. So to, uh, No, it's not a whirlpool, the, the spiral. It's not a 3D spiral, it's a 2D spiral, so to speak, it's this disk. But it doesn't go down into something, you know, it's like not like a whirlpool where you fall into the ocean. You don't fall down, you just get attracted. You know, that's very important to understand. Very important. Because otherwise, you know, I've I've and I've talked about this before. I and I'm doing quite a lot of research in how you imagine black holes and how your concepts develop on them and so and most people think they're actual not most people. That's unfair. They, there are people that think that they are really holes in space, and that's fine. You can imagine that if you if you imagine that, it's fine. I mean, it's it's pretty normal. Many people do that. It's natural, but uh, in reality, it's not. It doesn't look like that. That's that's quite interesting. And uh, yeah, let's see what uh, what this one does other than eating a star. Friction heats it up to temperatures high enough to shine five hundred thousand times brighter than our sun. And yet, X7 is only 15.65 solar masses and 92 kilometers wide, just big enough to cast a shadow on Corsica. Yeah. To grow much larger, black holes have to either devour a lot of stars, or better, merge with one another. And the first one is very unlikely, because stars are normally not that close together. I mean, there are special occasions where stars are close together. Uh, many stars like in the core of a galaxy or something like that but other than that it's perhaps a binary system and if you have a 
I don't even know if you have systems with three stars. I don't even know if they discovered one of those. I don't even think it's physically sensible to to think that exists. And uh, yeah, so the merger there, that can happen. That can happen. I mean, we've seen that. It's gravitational waves. We've detected them like, uh, what was it, two years ago, one year ago, three years ago, have lost time at uh, the time. But I don't, I, I mean, I, I don't know the time, but it, it was quite recent that they were measured and uh, they were followed up by Einstein indirectly through his field equations, and it's quite cool. So, still the theory holds. The instruments that make it possible to detect these mergers are very new, so we're currently discovering a lot of exciting things, like two massive black holes. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know how they de detect these. So you take a laser that is going this direction, and you take a laser that's going this direction, you know? And uh, the black hole merger um, contracts and extends space-time in a wave. That's the gravitational wave. And because you send the laser in this direction, it doesn't change because the whole thing goes up and down and you don't measure a difference in, in the distance. But if you look at this laser, it changes. The, the distance changes because the room at the space, not the room, the space between uh, 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 the space uh, where the laser travels contracts in a wave, you know, because the waves goes through. That's so cool, you can do that. But you have to take a very, very large laser, at a very, very large distance to measure that. But um, some people do it in school, it's a Michelson's interferometer, something like that. It, it works like that, but you uh, don't uh, change the the distance of the one um, uh, one path of the laser, you don't change that by screwing a screw and uh, moving a mirror closer. It's just space dust that itself. It's so cool. It's so cool. ...that we detected in a galaxy 17 billion light years away. As they spun around each other violently, they released more energy in the form of gravitational waves than the combined yeah. light from all the yeah, stars in the Milky Way in 4,400 years. Yeah. The new black hole they formed is about the size of Germany and is 142 solar masses. And here we hit a curious gap in scale. Yeah. There are lots of black holes up to 150 solar masses, and then there's nothing for a long time. Until we suddenly hit... And that's because I think there are... The largest star I think I know of is 292 solar masses, but I might not have the newest data there. And I, I don't know that it was four or five years ago when I read that up. So my mind might be a bit hazy on that one. But yeah, I mean, the, the black holes that I created by the normal hypernova so or as he said supernova perhaps they say it that way but i know the term hypernova for black hole formation because it's a louder bang so to speak than when a neutron star forms but yeah so the the ones created from stars obviously can only be created by stars and stars only have a mass up to i don't know 300 solar mass perhaps a bit more as far as i know i hope i'm not completely off here and um yeah, so that's that's the maximum limit for stellar stellar black holes, as you, as you already said, quite rightly, quite correctly. Um, yeah. By the way, that's so interesting. There are some stars that are like 300 solar masses or more. I will just take this number because that's the one I remember. I might miss a zero, but I don't think I am. Yeah, so um, the the size of those sometimes is the size of the solar system. So that's so, so cool Just how big they are, you know, it's wow. Wow. I mean, imagine that a star, a single star being that, um, that big, so cool. Terrifying as well, but cool. Black holes that are millions of times more massive, which is a bit confusing because we had this idea that black holes are consistently growing and growing. But for the most massive black holes, this process is not fast enough to explain their existence today. Yeah, and they have to take in mass. So 
to grow twice its size, it has to eat the mass of the star it was before it formed a black hole. Obviously, because you know the, the mass goes in it, it absorbs it. it. It radiates some Hawking radiation, so it shrinks again. So they, um, what's the word? Dissipate? Yeah, dissipate. So they, they dissipate after millions and billions of years. But yeah, so that's so cool. But yeah, you keep that in mind. So it's it's really, and as I said, that, that's why I said that. There are not many stars close to a black hole when it forms like in a solar system. Not many. But he will probably now talk about galactic nuclei or something like that. The universe is simply not old enough for these supermassive black holes to have formed by eating stars and merging with each other. And even if the universe was much, much, much older, much older, they won't form. I think, I I think because the it grows by taking in mass, and so they can yeah they they can collide black holes can collide so but then again if you take two black holes and then they um, collide they will um, yeah the the mass will be the one of the two black holes combined you know you just add them up and um, yeah the size is not uh, like uh, the d double the size it's another formula. But um, yeah, so they would, they also um, emit radiation and the universe also expands, though so they get farther apart. All of the black holes get farther apart. So I don't see them ever growing that big. I don't, I don't think so. I think that's highly unlikely. Something else must have happened. To explain how we got the largest black holes in the universe, we might need the largest stars that ever existed. Quasi stars. To get a sense of scale, we can compare them to the largest stars that exist today. Our sun is like a grain of sand next yep. to them. We don't know if quasi stars actually existed, but they're an interesting concept when it comes to supercharging black hole development. The idea is that the matter in the early universe was so dense that quasi stars could grow to thousands of times the mass of our sun. The cores of these stars might have been crushed by their own weight so much to actually collapse into black holes while the star was still forming. In contrast to stars today that would destroy themselves in the process, inside quasi stars, a deadly balance could emerge. Gravity pressed the supermassive star together, feeding the black hole and heating the material falling in to such a degree mm. that the radiation pressure kept the star stable. And so these quickly growing black holes might have been able to consume the quasi star for millions of years and grow far bigger than any modern stellar black hole. Yeah, I didn't know that. I have to be uh, frank with you. I didn't know that theory. It's good th uh, hypothesis. Sorry, I'm now I'm starting with that as well. I, I don't know that hypothesis. I think that sounds quite reasonable. I mean, you could probably just calculate it. Those protostars. Depends on how early the universe was, but it's perhaps not even a star. It's perhaps just an area. You don't. It's not a sphere. It's just an area where it's quite dense, and then it forms a sphere by the black hole. But I don't think it's like the star you would imagine right now. I don't think it's the star they've depicted here. Um, it's the star when everything was yellow and red, because it's not like it doesn't have a border. It's just an area that is really dense and hot. I think, but I I, I haven't uh, heard about these. Might have missed them somewhere down the line in my astronomy lectures when I was uh, visiting those. So yeah, learn something new. That's also good. I really like that. Black holes several thousand times the mass of the sun and wider than the entire Earth. These black holes might have become the seeds for supermassive black holes. Yeah. So now we arrive at the kings of our universe, the largest single bodies in existence. The centers of most galaxies contain a supermassive black hole, and they are monstrous. In the Milky Way, we have Sagittarius A star, a That's supermassive a big black one. hole with about 4 million solar masses Four that million. is calm and collected and just does its thing. We know it sits there because we can see a number of stars being thrown around by a seemingly empty spot. And despite its incredible mass, its radius is still only 17 times our sun. Yeah, imagine that in the center of the galaxy, this huge thing. But there are pictures where there's a black hole and the galaxy arms are around it. That's rubbish. It's, it's, you wouldn't see it. You wouldn't see it. I mean, you wouldn't see it because it's a black hole, but it's so cool. But something I wanted to say. 
yeah, those protostars could be the seeds of this, or it could be that the galaxy centers are just so dense when they are created that there's the mass of thousands and millions of stars that is just so close together and then comes together. That's that's also a possibility, I think. But yeah, I mean, it's probably both. Probably both because I think galaxies formed by, you know, it's it's like... So I've, I'm going to do another segue. Sorry, if the, I hope that doesn't bore you. Um, the, the structure of the universe, so to speak, like the rough structure, is by quantum fluctuations. You know, there's energy popping in and out of existence, and um, that energy also uh, is uh, converted to mass and back. So there are, it's like a random distribution of mass in the universe through that. And um, the points where there is a lot of mass, they can cluster together through gravity. And where there's not a lot of mass, they just, you know, it's, it's like there are points that attract all the mass and then there are the galaxies. Basically, that's the crash course. I missed, uh, I um, skipped some, skips, skips, uh, I skipped some steps, but it's, it's you can roughly uh, imagine that. You know, like like this picture, you might know this picture with the uh, um, background radiation where this is this like uh, a noise, static noise, but it has a bit of a pattern. It's a bit like that. A bit like that because it's also it's a picture of the quantum fluctuations from the big bang if you adhere to these newest uh hypothesis hypotheses or theories and i th the big bang theory the big bang is a is more of a theory nowadays than a hypo hypo hypothesis those are hard words interesting smaller than most giant stars yeah millions of times more massive because supermassive black holes are so massive and located at the center of galaxies, many people imagine them as being a bit like the sun in the solar system, an anchor that glues everything else together and forces it into an orbit. But this is a misconception. No. No. While the sun makes up 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system, supermassive black holes usually only have 0.001% of the mass of their galaxy. The billions of stars in galaxies are not gravitationally bound to them. Instead, it's the gravitational effect of dark matter which holds them together. Yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is, and might have been confusing, but perhaps you already understood. So I'm sorry if it's the case. Um, the dark matter is what makes the galaxies rotate in a plane. It's not the black hole. It's not like the um, yeah, it's not like the accretion disk, this this disk around the black holes, the stellar black holes that we saw earlier. It's not like that. It's not like one of the disks is the arm of the galaxy. It's it's uh, the galaxy disk forms by dark matter if dark matter is true. So, and currently it's our work. It's our theory. Uh, no, again, I made the mistake. It's our hypothesis that there's dark matter, and yeah, so it's it's in a way perhaps even. That the dark matter made this made the center. Um... No, that's rubbish. Never mind. I just thought something stupid. Many supermassive black holes aren't gentle giants, especially when they're feeding on the clouds of mass in their galaxy. The one at the center of the BL Lacerti galaxy is devouring so much material that it produces jets of plasma accelerated to nearly the speed of light. If Earth were orbiting this huge body, it would seem 150. <laughs> no, no, that's wrong. You wouldn't die. No. I mean, it's a funny joke, but it's not a joke. And yeah, I, I will. I will. Two things I'm gonna talk about. So first, you know, if this this accretion disk, this disk around the black hole, and you saw it here too, just just now, the the disk, there is charged matter in it and the charged matter is um, spinning in a circle and because of that there is an um, electromagnetic field that is um, you know because it's the um, because it's the um, the the Lorentz force 
Laurentian force. I don't. I'm sorry. I just don't know the English word for it. This, uh, you know, this three finger rule. You know, it's the, the plane where it moves and a perpendicular to that plane is the jet because um, it's the same effect. There is charge moving around, and uh, in this plane, and um, so um, the, the charge and the charge and velocity and uh, yeah. On top of that, perpendicular is the magnetic field, and the magnetic field shoots out all the other charged particles because it's a magnetic field. And the second thing I wanted to talk about is you can fall into a supermassive black hole without a problem. Because um, what kills you is spaghettification. It's a stupid word, I know. Probably heard of it once. Um, it's when you're, you go close to a small black hole because it's so small, let's say this is a black hole. Um, Space is crushed towards the middle, and you fall quicker when you're here than when you're here. You know, you fall quicker here than here, so you get pulled apart and pulled together. So, because um, these points are compressed into these points, you get crushed from the sides. <laughs> Very lovely. And because this one falls slower than this one, you get stretched out. You know, that's what kills you here. But in the supermassive black holes, it's not that way. It's not that the, the, the change in space is not that big. You can just hit, you can just dive into it. And there are people who think there are, um, there are gates to dimensions, but it's not scientists mostly. It's just a science fiction thing, which doesn't mean it's wrong. We don't know. We have no clue. We have no theory of everything, so we don't know this. If you had a theory of everything, you might know what's the central point in the black hole, which might be an area. I mean, I've talked about that a bit. So this is a super massive black hole. And I think you wouldn't die here. You would just fall into it. And then inside the black hole, that would happen. But time stops there, as far as we know. We don't know. Just don't know. So this is a funny joke. Unfortunately, it's not that true. I think this is already big enough so you won't get crushed to death outside. You will get crushed to death inside. But I'm not sure if we can describe that yet. So you might not even get, discrush, uh, get crushed inside because we just don't have information about that. We don't know. We don't know if you would die inside. It's highly likely, I think. Because time stops in reverse and, and time and space flip, it's so weird. So weird. Yeah. In times larger than our sun in the sky, and we'd be burnt to a crisp in seconds by its glowing hot accretion disk. At this That's a cop out. That is a cop out. It doesn't have to have an accretion disk. It doesn't have to have that. And the one he showed didn't have that much of an accretion disk. Yes, he's he's right. What he said is true, and his point of view made sense. But it's a bit of a cop out. You wouldn't die by falling in. You wouldn't get crushed. You would, yeah, well, you would burn. But that's like like saying the planet and interstellar they should have burned because there was an accretion disk. Doesn't work. Doesn't work like good. Oh, by the way, in interstellar, I think that scene made no sense with the time dilation like that because they were so far away from the supermassive black hole, so the, 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 the time distortion effect shouldn't be that big, because of the same reason I just told you. That's what I, what I think. I'm pretty sure. Because the one in Interstellar is also... I think it was supposed to be a supermassive black hole. If it was, that made not that much sense. The effect does exist, that is shown with the aging, and it's very, very great. But I think it's, yeah, it's cinematic leeway. You can give them that it was a good movie. Point. Black holes become so large that stars seem ridiculously tiny compared to them. The galaxy Cygnus A has a supermassive black hole with 2.5 billion solar masses and 14.7 billion kilometers wide, which would mean that if it took the place of our sun, it would swallow all the planets and stretch halfway to the edge of our solar system. Now we're getting to the big one. It's devouring so much mass and material that it churns its disk into a kind of magnetic funnel, spewing gases. Yeah, that's what I said. Radio lobes towering over the galaxy, half a million light years in diameter. That's two and a half Milky Ways wide. But then again, it has to have time to travel that distance, you know, because it's it's an electromagnetic field. It travels with the speed of light, so uh, the it. 
the universe has to be older than the uh, than the length that uh, the distance is uh, traveled. Just a fact, uh, a fun fact, perhaps. Another pretty large supermassive black hole sits in the galaxy Messier 87. It has 6.5 billion solar masses and was the first black hole we got an actual photo. And this is the one that uh, people know, I think. You might know this one. This is the one you most likely know. It's not a photo, you know, it's, it's the, um, you see only the accretion disk here again, the, the, this disk around it. And it's not a hole, you know, it's, it's, that's so important. I just want to stress that it's not, you know, you don't fall in here, it's a sphere. You can fall into the, into here. From, because if it would be a hole in space, what would be, how would it look from the other side? Yeah, it wouldn't make sense. Or rather, of the glowing gas around the edge yeah. of a menacing shadow. It's a very good video, by the way. This very, very good. This darkness is so large that it covers our entire solar system. And yet, there is a scale even above these kinds of objects. Ultramassive black holes. I haven't heard of that. Never heard that before. Now we reach the most massive black holes, perhaps the largest single bodies that will ever exist. These black holes have eaten so much that they've grown to tens of billions of solar masses, their gravity the engine for a quasar, an accretion disk shining brighter than thousands of galaxies full of stars. So massive that they deserve a title of their own. That has to be very recent that they call them that. Very recent. I mean, we know that, as far as as far as I know, we know that quasars are very, very, very like these big black holes. He's completely right. What he's saying that the name I've never heard that. I've never heard that. Ultra massive black holes. The ultra massive black hole at the center of galaxy OJ two eight seven is eighteen billion solar masses. It's so big that it has a supermassive black hole nearly 40 times larger than Sagittarius A star orbiting it. This thing defies imagination and is really hard to compare to anything. Yeah. It can comfortably fit three solar systems side by side inside of it. Let's end this. But that's not that much bigger than the last one. See, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. And I think the one he's talking about, it's, it is big. Don't get me wrong, it's really big, but it's not in a magnitude where you say that it gets a new name. Because it's still a galaxy. A quasar, as far as I know, is, you know, because they are so far away. So if you look into space, I mean, you probably know that the stars you see are in the past because light needs time to travel to you. And the quasars are the oldest light that comes to you. So it's close to the Big Bang. You know what I'm saying? So... They are very young galaxies that are, nowadays, they don't look that way. And that's why, why in, on the edge of our known universe, so to speak, so the, 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 the distance where light can travel to us still, because if, if something was farther away than that distance, it, the light wouldn't have had time in the universe's edge to go to us. So on that edge, so to speak, or, and a bit closer, um, there are these quasars, and they are very bright in what he's saying. Everything is right, he's saying. And so that, that's, that's why they are so special, because they are so young. But it hasn't, any, hasn't got anything to do with the, really with the size, because, um, yeah, they are young galaxies. But then again, I mean, it's three times the one in the, the, the one galaxy he, he showed us. It's only three times, only three times bigger. You know what I mean? It's not that special and that's why I'm confused by the name. It doesn't make sense for me. But they, I don't know, I have to look it up. But yeah, I will, I will write it. If anyone wants to know, write, write it down in the comments. I will look that up. Insane competition and get to the king of kings. Tun 618, a black hole that we can observe consuming galaxies worth of matter, is shining with the brightness of a hundred trillion stars. Yeah, see, it's a very young galaxy, so it obviously eats the galaxy up. You know, the, those are small galaxies that are eaten up. Visible from 18 billion light years away. 
It has an incredible 66 billion solar masses, a black hole so large that it would take light a week to reach the singularity after crossing the event horizon. About a that did not make any sense. That did not make any goddamn sense, I'm sorry, I think. Because light doesn't travel anymore inside. We don't know what's, what happens, really. We have some... We know some... We have some, some hypotheses. But I think he means if you take the distance and you travel that distance by light, but not into the black hole. You know what I mean? He says, if you take the point from the event horizon to the singularity in the middle, that distance and if if you put that distance into space and let a light ray trace uh, trail it trace it then it would need a week or whatever she said that would make sense but if he means that it's a bit poorly phrased and a bit yeah because it's an area and we don't know what's inside might be another universe there are theories that think that uh, black holes are seeds of another universe it's like the procreative evolutionary process of universes don't know what to think about them. Interesting stuff, but yeah, but we don't know that. That, that. that is misleading. That is, I think that is misleading, but it's the first thing I really don't think that was scientifically accurate what he said here. 11 solar systems could sit inside of it side by side. It may very well be the largest single body in the universe, but in reality, it's probably even larger. Since Tun 618 is so far away, we only see what it looked like 10 billion years ago. Yeah, 10 billion years, so 3, 3 billion years after the creation of the universe, which is very, very, very young. And you have to consider that hmm, it might not, you, you know, it's, it's, it's not that big. And if it's in the center of a young galaxy, it obviously eats a lot because a lot of matter is in the center of the young galaxy. Because of the things you said before, you know, in the Big Bang, there were dense areas and there were very dense areas. And that's where it, the galaxy started to form. And so in this area, there was, um, it ate a lot, a lot of stuff and got really big. But if I really remember correctly, they evaporate faster if they are bigger. So if you have a, and this is all random numbers that are not real. But let's say there is a black hole two meters in diameter, meter. it would take a day to go to one meter diameter and if there's a one diameter black hole it would take four days to go um or two days or four, something like that to go to half a meter diameter you know that, that that's something so the very black hole it might have shrunk quite quickly actually if it didn't have enough mass anymore i will look that up if i am not right with this i will put it here let's see if i was right if i was not right yeah, then I don't really have anything other else to say to this, but yeah. In any case, black holes are scary and mysterious and yeah. gigantic. They'll be here after everything else dies and growing larger and larger. Okay. No, I'm sorry, that was also wrong. Because as I said, there's Hawking radiation. There will be a time... So, we don't really know what happens at the end of the universe. We have no clue. There are good hypotheses, though. Again, and one of the hypotheses is, and I think that's currently, if you take the physics we have today, that's the most likely one. Everything will be eaten up by black holes at one day. So there will be only black holes. These black holes will, will then radiate and uh, disperse through Hawking radiation. So they will evaporate and... When they are evaporated, there's just very low, low frequency energy radiation and the universe will expand until forever. And that's it. Quite, uh, yeah, it's, that's, yeah, that's very, very strange. But yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's go. Okay, now let's go do further. the trip again. From the yeah. smallest possible black hole. Why is the primordial black hole now as big as an atom? That is icky stuff. That is icky stuff. That would just that would evaporate. That would have evaporated till now, I think. And it's even it's it's a proton. It's a black hole the size of a proton. 
I would have to calculate that, but I think that might have evaporated already. Not sure though. Might be still be there. But yeah, take this with a grain of salt. Um, but it's not the one he was talking about. You know, this is a bit inconsistent. His uh, example before was a, black, a primordial black hole size of the Earth. And I'm talking mass here, not uh, actual diameter. Would be like a coin. That's okay. That would probably be alive, I think. But this, I'm not sure. And it gets ickier because we start getting into quantum fluctuations in physics and we don't really know anything about those two combined. All the way up to the largest. <laughs> I love how we put Earth there. Where was the sun? I would have liked to see the sun. Because I'm sorry to interrupt this epic journey but uh, the sun is a lot larger than the earth that would have been cool as well to get that comparison again that's okay never mind that that's you know, these are not real sized comparisons anymore. Because. Are they? No, that wouldn't make sense. Because he said. Because I know the largest star, star is as big as the solar system. So he said 11 stars. 11 solar systems, I think, would fit in here. Or here. But that doesn't ma match with the, with the. That doesn't match with the description here. So the star was a bit rubbish there. But whatever. Epic journey. He should have played Inception music, but it's probably Let's copyrighted. Something new today. We can call it Behind the Lies. A short behind the scenes bit about the necessary inaccuracies in this video. Oh, we... it's not... how cool. Let's see. Let's see. Is it actually possible to rank black holes like trading cards? How so? Well, while we've catalogued millions of stars, we really only have good data on a couple of dozen black holes. That's because black hole gazing wasn't really a thing until 50 years ago, and technically still isn't, because... Yeah, and I think they only discovered, really discovered, it was a theory. No. Again, I'm so stupid with this. I'm sorry if I ever slipped this up. It's very important to me, though, that you understand this. If that, that was a hypothesis for a long, long time that there were black holes, and then they found one, I think, in the 70s or so. We can't see black so holes. young that we, we know that. We can only derive their properties from studying their gravitational effects on the matter around them, like the orbit of stars that come close to them. This effect depends on the mass of the black hole, which we can approximate at the most basic level with Kepler's laws. But this comes with huge uncertainties and error bars. Yes, yes, very good, very good. Wow, kudos to you, my friend. That is so good that they say this. I was not sure to say this myself, but yeah, you have to be so careful because we do, those error bars, they get so big. They get so big if you get into astronomy. And um, it's like I've been in a planetarium where they, uh, I've been working with them to create new shows to um, show students and pupils sizes of things you know in this uh, this dome and they have the starry sky that they um that they have from measurements not the one you can see but the one they have from measurements which is bigger and the one you see it's not like that they don't know if it's like that it's just you know because the error bars are so big the star could be here or here or here if it's further out it's so cool so if you fly out of the galaxy with the simulation they have the data gets more and more blurry and if they would do it correctly they were just huge blobs of i think there's a star no i know there's a star in this giant blob it's so cool i'm so glad that they did this this is such a good video then we have to convert mass to size next, which brings new uncertainties. For example, we calculated the radius from the mass using the Schwarzschild equation, yeah. which for the sake of simplicity, assumes black holes are perfectly round and don't spin. But yes. Wow. Great. Yeah. They can spin, they can have charge, because you can't uh, destroy um, angular momentum. And the star has angular momentum. <laughs> You know, every star spins, so a black hole has to conserve that, so it has to spin. Most of them have to. So it's, that's one of the corrections I told you about. That's one of the corrections. 
and I don't know the correction. I don't know the formula for a spinning black hole. And I don't know the correction for a charged black hole as well. In theory, charge is also conserved. Although I think we don't know that really because it's quantum mechanics. But it's it's a good supposition that uh, supposition that stars uh, if stars are charged, black holes are charged as well, and charge is conserved. Might be so. Yeah, that's also that's so good. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is very good. This guy. A kind of black hole that doesn't really exist. The reality is that physics on these scales is a bit fuzzy. So some of the black holes we talked about here may be way smaller or way bigger. We just yeah. don't know for sure. We shimmered around this problem by comparing different sources with different kinds of values and using different mass calculations to arrive at a standardized list that allowed us to be as accurate as humanly possible. Wow, guys, that is so amazing that you did all this work. Wow. Please subscribe to them. Jesus. This is absolutely amazing. Wow. That is so great. Wow. Who did it? Professor Matthew Kaplan from Illinois State University. Thank you, Professor Matthew Kaplan, for this. Perhaps you just gave them the data. Doesn't matter. So great that they work with them. Possible. Wow. You can look at all of this in our source doc. As a result, this script was written with the tears of experts we drove crazy with our obsession for the best values they could live with. In this process, yeah, I know that. stuff got cut and didn't make it into the final video. But luckily, we found a way to not waste all of it. We've created a lot of black hole merch, spanning the whole range from somewhat bonkers to more serious. This way, we get to explore a topic from different angles, and you get to continue having fun with black holes after this video ends. That's so cute. That's so cute. So... I have to say that it was probably the best educational video about black holes I've ever seen. It was very, very, very good. I'm quite impressed about that. Wow. So if you like this, consider subscribing to them. Give them, I will link it, of course, in the description of the video. Wow, I'm quite smitten by this. This is very good. I mean, I'm, I'm working in physics ed education as well, and they can show this in school. No problem. And in Germany, there are some channels on YouTube. They were so rubbish. There was just some idiots talking rubbish about physics and everyone watches them and everything everyone thinks they know physics. If you want to watch a video, watch this one on black holes. They're good. There were one or two things I think they did not really do that correctly, very small things, but they don't matter. You you will you won't you know, all the stuff you learned uh to the standards of today's science here as that's so amazing. I'm really, really impressed by this. So, yeah, take this video as a little bonus. I'm uh, going to do Marty Scare next. Didn't do that in a while, but I just wanted to do this. So, um, yeah, the one who requested this, you know who you are. <laughs> Thank you for uh, making me do this. This was a pleasure. And um, yeah, I, I would show this in school. You, so if there's anywhere, any day, a teacher in school watching this, yeah, you can show this. That's great. I don't know about their other videos, I haven't had a look, but yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, by the way, I will do the Holtzman effect from Dune. I will discuss that in, from a physics perspective soon, because I finally understood what, they, what, what, the, what it's about and it's genius, but I will do that later. Anyway, I hope that you have a great day. If you like this reaction, consider liking, subscribing. If you have any questions to me, put them in the comments. I mean, it's not my main area of expertise, you know, like in hard science, black holes, I do the very basic stuff about black holes and I, I, I uh, look how, and I, I, I see how people understand the basics. That's what I do in science, uh, science education, in this area of research. I'm in, in hard science, I'm more of a quantum physicist. Um, so, I might have gotten numbers wrong or stuff like that. So anyway, hope you enjoy yourself. Have a very, very great day and see you around. Bye.